the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. It is now late September and an interesting feature of the sports scene is the how many wins do you have in baseball to get into the playoffs? So there's, there's it's kind of a astronomic uh, quantifying. And you get to the next place because of how you did in the past places. Incidentally, um, <clears throat> it would be very helpful, and I'm not sure it, if you were to enjoy these homilies, to be sure to read the readings, especially the first and the third reading of the Catholic liturgy. And especially this week, because it comes from the 55th chapter of Isaiah, which is at the end of the Book of Consolation. There are some things that are very uh, important to in a way challenge. In the Hebrew scriptures, they would say, Isaiah would challenge the people who are listening to him in exile, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is still near. That's, that's very easy to understand. You keep seeking for God. God is somewhere to be found. And of course, wherever you are, God can't be found there. So be careful. And, and of course, this, the second part of the prophecy is a rather short reading. My ways are not your ways. My ways are high above your ways. Okay, that's kind of a challenge. And then the gospel is a very famous story of the landowner who hired somebody at dawn. He went out at dawn, very important figure, and then went out a couple hours later and hired somebody, and all for the same wages, a day's wage. And then somebody he hired, the work still had to be done, so he hired somebody the last hour. And then when it came to payment time, they all got the same amount of money. He said, well, that's not fair. And the parable is that the owner said, but didn't I hire you at six o'clock this morning for this amount? And you think it's not fair that I gave are you questioning my, gen can't I be generous? Or am I into your economic system? That's a very, very thoughtful. Um, what's, what's the pinch for us, maybe we'd say, or what's the call? I'd like to challenge that God is the seeker, not the sought, and God is the, Finder, not the found. We don't find God. If we find God, we'll always be finding God finding us. That love is the one who reaches out, who seeks. And those of you who know what love is and experience love, you become the seeker. Your love makes you want to find. And, and you, as lover, want the found, the person you love, to keep finding her or himself. Love does that. Love not only gives the other person who they are, but gives them experiences and affirmations and corrections. I'm giving you you as finder. I don't find you and leave you there. And we see that so much in the life of Jesus that 
that Jesus went around helping people see who they really were. So don't look for, don't look for a divine needle in a cosmic haystack. It's to trust that where you find life and love and truth, forgiveness, encouragement, that's God finding you, helping you be you. So in the gospel, the parable is really about a divine economic versus a mercantile economic. That, for instance, God's finding us is merciful because that's who God is. And it can be in the 10th hour or in the first hour. But we do have this, this way of trying to accumulate. God has a book and writes down on one side the good and one side the bad. That's an economic. And we're, we're accustomed to that. We're accustomed to how many wins do we have? How many of this? And how, are we qualified by being quantified? And it's, there, are, there are a lot of banking terms I've noticed in spirituality. Uh, earning, meriting, credit, investment. It's, um, it's the way we do it. So we say if, if it's the way of, of my, our ways of quantifying and qualifying ourselves, then it is that way with God. No, my ways are different from yours. I give you your quality. I give you your merit. You say, well, if I do 450 spiritual push-ups, isn't God pleased? That's very projecting, making God us. God's ways are not our ways. I'm not against doing good things, but we do the good things because of a goodness within us. God doesn't pay us. Get rid of that. We don't earn. The payment has been made. We don't merit, we receive. We don't find, we are found. And so the challenge is, of course, does God love me because I've lived this long life and so God's got to be good? No, God's got to be good because of who God is. And God doesn't keep a book. So when Jesus goes around and gives people themselves, he gives us ourselves in the Eucharist, in our prayer, in the relationships. It's always God finding who I am by how you let me, how you let me know how I am, who I am. God doesn't seek me as if I'm found. God seeks me that I might find myself more and more because of the opportunities of life and of his love. And of course, the, the beauty is then, I love people not because of what they do. I don't let them into the playoffs of my life because they've won so many uh, of my games. No, we're dealing with a loving God who seeks to help me find me and to know that I am created and found by God constantly. No, so we walk this week um, not earning, but watch the investment terms. And in, in you, you can hear it in prayers and homilies. You have to do good to be good. No, we do good because we are good. And that's what we receive in prayer, in the Eucharist, in being created, and being found by people who love us 
as a revelation of the God who finds us because God loves us. We don't make an investment in God. God has made an eternal investment in each of us.